All righty. I think you're taking it away, right, Sarah? I think uh, I think we can get started. Yeah, sure. Cool. Um, yeah, I can go ahead and introduce myself. Hi, uh, everyone. I am Sarah. I'm the head of sales at Better.com. Um, we'll I think get a little bit more into what Better does, but we are a online digital lender, um, fully online, um, fully digital. Um, doing some unique things to automate and make the mortgage process more streamlined um, and more efficient and ultimately more cost effective for our customers. Um, so I lead our sales team, uh, oversee about 700 loan officers um, who help customers buy homes every day and use Front to do that. So mm. excited to chat with Andrew. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, th thank you. Um, hey everybody, my name is Andrew Berger and I'm the head of global sales over here at Front. Um, we ha our team is a little smaller than 700. Um, we have people in, in Paris actually and Phoenix, Cal Phoenix, Arizona, excuse me, and headquartered in San Francisco, California. Um, and we can move on to the next slide to give you a little visual on what Front is and then I'll give you my little preamble. Um, so before we get into the Q&A session in about a minute or so for right now, uh, to a little bit of high level explain what Front is. Front uh, is the leading customer communication platform that takes work email and basically turns that into a workflow platform. So you can connect not only email, but people, conversations, messages, and applications all into one viewpoint like a command center and you can take actions and be more efficient and effective with your workflows. Um, so with Front, you get a shared perspective on the communications that power your business. You can stay in alignment. And all in all, our goal is, is really to enable our customers to do what they need to do better, faster, um, and, and retain customers and grow their business. And so we believe that, that as a heart of that paradigm is customer communication. And so we've turned email into a workflow platform. Wonderful. Um, yeah, and a little bit more about Better, uh, where we love Front and could not agree more that it is the uh, leader in, in communications technology. Communication is a huge part and customer service of what we do at Better. So Better is, um, as I said, an online digital platform. We have essentially broken down the mortgage process, which is, um, as I'm sure many of you know very closely, uh, a very archaic industry full of paperwork and a lot of manual work, um, which causes very high cost to customers and really long turn times. And ultimately customers just wanna be able to buy that house or get themselves into a better rate through a refinance. So at Better, we've broken down the whole process um, and re-engineered it from the ground up to create a fully digital platform. Um, and what that means is customers can go online, they can get pre-approved completely by themselves in three minutes. Um, they can get an official CFPB loan estimate immediately. Um, and we have a ton of different tools that can lock themselves um, by themselves online. They don't have to wait for a loan officer. Um, and they can go through the whole process of the mortgage by themselves in a very self-service um, type of way. But what we realized many years ago was that while we create a self-service mortgage platform for our customers, customers still want to be guided through this process. Um, you know, as realtors, they want to be guided through the home buying process and they want to be guided through the mortgage process. So we have a whole team, as I said, of um, folks who help our customers and communicate with our customers and create a, a new type of customer service in the mortgage industry. Um, and we leverage Front to do a lot of that um, to really have those really fast um, response times and just best in class customer service um, throughout our entire loan process. Amazing. Uh, I, I'm gonna be in the market for buying a home in probably a year or so. And so I will be definitely turning to better. Let us know. <laughs> yeah. All righty, everybody. So um, I'm your proctor today, and I'm going to be asking Sarah a handful of questions about uh, what's going on in, in their side and how they leverage technology um, to hit on every single thing that Sarah mentioned before. And I'm sure we're going di to divert or divulge our conversation in a couple different areas and um, feel free to chat us if there's anything that stands out. Um, so number one biggest picture question is... Um, you know, since the pandemic started, really the beginning of this year, we have felt implications and reverberations um, on our business. Curious, given the topic of discussion 
uh, in the home lending space where we're seeing macro and micro perspective. Um, what are some biggest challenges or a few challenges here and there that you've seen really since the start, the beginning of the year, as we've all, you know, I'm not going to beat a dead horse about adapting to a new norm, but everything's yeah. going on. What are the challenges you have seen in your business? Yeah, you know, I think that that's a question, you know, we're all asking ourselves in our in our different industries, um, you know, sitting in the mortgage space um, in the real estate uh, industry, we have two core types of transactions. We have purchase loans and we have refinance loans. Purchase loans, of course, we're helping people buy new homes and refinance loans, we're helping people refinance their homes. So as soon as um, you know the, the pandemic started to impact businesses, of course, interest rates lowered and the government lowered interest rates to drive um, you know, economic stimulus, which is always good for the refinance business. So we have seen a major boom in our refinance applications. Um, I have some stats here. We've seen a 200% increase in demand um, in uh, applications. Um, and so on the refinance side, the challenge has just been honestly keeping up with volume and being able to service all of our customers. Um, we've been able to leverage technology because customers can go online and do that self-service. Um, but it has been difficult to keep up with um, all the questions customers have, especially because the market is so volatile and customers are are um, you know really uncertain around what's going on. So do I lock today? Do I lock tomorrow? They do, uh, and they are looking for that counseling. Um, so that's on the refinance side. On the purchase side, um, you know it's been so interesting to see because obviously initially with a lot of the shelter in place, um, one of the first things people started saying was, well, what's going to happen to the real estate market? What's going to happen to people buying homes? And yes, at first we did see people, um, you know, obviously. Uh, kind of retreat from the market a bit, but we're starting to see it come back in a really powerful, powerful way. People continued to get pre-approval letters online throughout the process, which said to us, you know what, people are kind of trying to figure out what's going on, but they're still really interested in buying a home. And I think that that's um, something that a lot of realtors have seen as well, which is why we've all kind of been saying, just hold on um, and wait for things to start to reopen um, because I think we'll start to see people who have been sheltering in place in their apartments in cities maybe want to move out and we'll start to see some of these trends where people may yeah. want a little bit more space or want to engage in in the purchase market that makes that makes a lot of sense so it sounds like the refinance market is booming and a lot of people kicking tires on the net new purchase and you're you you anticipate that to have a pretty slope uh, a pretty steep slope to that curve in a couple of months from now on the purchase side. We do. We do. Okay. We're already starting to see it between, um, let me think, last month was May. Between April and May, <laughs> April we saw, what month is it, right? In April we saw, yeah, a so we saw purchase transactions come down by 50%, but in May they already rebounded back to the same levels they were in in February. Um, mm. which is definitely say, show, saying to us that we're starting to see, um, you know, that that V, um, of course. And we're also, it's super interesting with technologies, we're, we're also starting to see that people are starting to participate in the home ownership market through technology in ways that they didn't before. So doing virtual open houses um, and buying homes without actually ever setting foot in them. Um, mm. People are actually starting to participate um, in a different way and really leverage technology. That's that's awesome. Um, happy to hear that. Like the market obviously is like rebounding from a macro and a micro perspective. At yeah. least of one one data point here. Um, I have another interesting question I have to lay on top is, you know, every day I'll I'll shed some light into my morning routine. I drink coffee. I catch up on emails. I listen to the news and I go peruse through open homes. And, yeah. Um, you know, seeing what's out in the market, and I know in my own head that when I want to when I'm ready to purchase a home, it's going to be, I want that white glove ex experience. And given the new norm that we're in today with social distancing, with um, people potentially doing virtual tours, on your business side, with refinance or purchase, given what's going on in the world today, how are you able to service customers, you know, potential home buyers or refinancers? And in that traditional white glove experience, people want to be the proverbial handhold through the process. It's such a great question. It's something that we've actually been trying to figure out for the last four years because we've always been digital. So we're not actually really facing anything new right now from that digital perspective because we've never had a brick and mortar location. So we've been trying to crack that code of how do you deliver a white gloves experience over a digital landscape um, mm -hmm. for many years. And that's where we've leveraged tools like Front 
who have omni-channel solutions. And things that we've built out are, um, we still have you know, primary points of contact for the customer, so they still get assigned that loan officer. The agent still gets, um, a, we actually have a, a, a unique process for our agents. Our agents have an experienced partner, so they have somebody that provides white glove service to the agent as well um, and helps guide them through the process. Um, and we've really leveraged, um, you know, communications technology like Front to be able to provide things like text messages um, and quick email communication um, in order to really bridge that gap and to make customers feel like they're having that white glove um, experience and, um, you know, having that direct communication and that direct line of communication. You know, we find that people um, kind of like to do this process on the weekends or in their free time. And so if they mm -hmm. can access that person digitally or virtually, um, they, they really like that. Makes total sense. And I think to, to layer on top of that, um, your, your team has, um, you've serviced customers in a completely digital, some would say remote environment, but your team hasn't always been remote. Um, how is that, how, how are you managing your 700 loan officers remotely? Like any challenges or any surprises that you've seen, collaboration ideas uh, in, in managing your team today? Yeah, <laughs> it's always it's it's been interesting, as I'm sure you've seen, as we have all seen. Um, yes, you're most, looking at my living room. That's why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're all getting to know what the insides, you know, people's tastes and things like that. Um, so one of the interesting kind of silver linings has been we've seen productivity go up um, because the uh, people aren't commuting. Um, and so, uh, you know, people are spending more time working, servicing customers. Um, I think because, you know, one, uh, you know, our, we really try to create a culture where people really enjoy what they're doing. They really enjoy helping customers with the largest financial tra transaction of their life. So we're seeing a lot of our reps just log in um, additional hours to, to work with customers. Um, and, you know, probably because they're kind of stuck in their house and they're like, well, you know, I might as well work a couple extra hours, but we've seen productivity go up. We're trying to balance that and make sure people are still maintaining a good work-life balance. Uh, but we've seen productivity go up, which has been interesting. I actually also heard that, um, a lot of our employees that they really like it. They've gotten to spend more time with family. Um, and so we are actually thinking about how we can incorporate, um, you know, the, the benefits of the remote work as we um, kind of come back into the office. I think some of the negatives has obviously been team morale, training and onboarding is much more difficult. You know, and as you know, uh, you can't do as much shadowing and, and managing is, is much more difficult. I think you have a lot, have a lot more rigor around communication and um, metrics and things like that. Um, but again, not to, to, to sell front for you, I, I, <laughs> I'm a big believer in front. Uh, we were an early adopter. Um, but front, through the team, uh, we really leverage, for those of you who haven't seen front's interface, um, front has, the reason we actually went with front was both the omni-channel solution and because of the, the team feature. So uh, many of our folks who work on the loan files work in a team, um, in a team-based. And so through front, you can have an email thread, but you can also chat with other people who are working on that email communication. You can tag people in it and things like that. So Front has really allowed us to maintain those standards of communication and the communication between different reps um, through a lot of the features and a lot of the team collaboration um, that we typically do in person. Well, you're doing my job for me. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I'll move right along to our questions. I do want to make sure we have a yeah. time for um, for for the audience to, to drop a few Q and A's in there. One thing that's interesting, probably the market for for your business, is that Better.com has famously been zero commission. Um, yeah. Of course, me as a consumer, I like to save money. Uh, as a future home buyer, I will like to save that money. But there's a certain level of you know hustle that incentives or compensation or commissions can uh, can enable behaviors in the right direction. Yeah. How do you how do you manage the team, or how does Better.com think holistically um, about like the team productivity and hustle and you know driving your business forward without the um, commission element? And you know, at front, we think about impact versus productivity. Like we have all yeah. these productivity tools, but at the end of the day, it's about impact. And impact for us is our customers getting their things done, you know, getting their missions possible, completion. Um, so how do you kind of think through those um, paradigms I just laid out? 
Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and it's one we get asked a lot. So for us in the mortgage industry, the reason that we removed, I'm not, you know, being in sales, I'm not anti-commission in a lot of different areas. I totally agree with you. I think it can be a really powerful technique. For us in the mortgage industry, the reason that we decided to remove the loan officer commission is because we don't want, we believe that the commission for the loan officer puts them at odds with the financial well-being of the customer. So we really think that this is an ethical and a moral issue. Um, and we are in the mortgage industry to revolutionize it and to um, make home ownership more accessible to more Americans. And the loan officer commission historically has been based on basis points for on the loan amount and how many loans people close. I do not want my salespeople to feel like they can't put food on the table because they need to close another transaction. They need to make another customer take a loan. And so yeah. it's a core ethos. We're a mission driven company and it's part of who we are. Um, and so we hire people who believe in that. Um, and all of our sales reps, every single employee at Better is a shareholder. So everyone receives shares. We're now over 2,000 employees, so we're not small. Everyone is still a shareholder. And so they are motivated by our mission. They're motivated by driving this industry forward. Um, and we still have healthy base salary. We still pay market rate um, on an all-in basis. Um, and we still make them feel like they are, of course, valued and compensated for their work. Um, but they're also in it to help build and drive and, and be fulfilled by the work that they're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, people have said, well, how, how are you able to have this non-commission structure and still keep up with the commission loan officer? All I can really point to is um, our rankings among national loan officers this year. The Scotsman Guide is an industry trade magazine that ranks all of the loan officers in the country. We have um, one of our loan officers was in the top 10. We have over 40 in the top 100. Sorry, in the top, I have to pull the stats in the top 500. Um, we crush the list every year. Um, our loan officers are on average, just throwing some more stats out there, um, on average, 1,200% more productive than your average industry loan officer. So our hmm. technology um, and our kind of mission-driven ethos, we believe, has been able to drive um, productivity without having to have a solution. Yeah, that, that, that resonates so well with me. It's like, give people purpose and impact and what are you shooting for, for that bigger picture, that North star yeah. of, of, of the business and of the individual and can all ladder up to that ethos, to that mission, to that impact statement. Exactly. And then that's how be behaviors are, are um, created or adapted and molded. So exactly. that's, that's really, that's really cool. Um, alrighty. Last question on my list for you is um, as we mentioned, one of the first questions has been a pretty large increase of, I'm going back to the business side here, but a pretty large increase on the refinancing side of the house. Um, help us understand if you saw that X percent, I think, I think you, what was that sad? 50% or hundred percent increase in refinances. Um, yeah. 200%, excuse me, 200%, just me, yeah. 200 percent, excuse me, 200 percent increased demand on refinancing. Um, yes, there's fronts to help you, but like, how are you managing and like, what are you seeing um, the team respond to that 2x? increase of refinancing inquiries yeah it's it's a lot you know and and it can be a lot for um our employees to keep up with that volume um i think that one of the core things is that our technology and our online platform really um drives an ease of doing business for the customer so just for some kind of context in the industry typically a loan officer takes the 1003 over the phone or at some point, the loan officer has to step in to help the customer lock in their interest rate or complete the application. The 1003 is the official government application. All of that is actually done through our online interface. So our loan officers are, are acting in a much more consultant advisory type of capacity. So we have tons of customers who are just coming in and applying online um, and going ahead and locking in their interest rate by themselves. Um, and then, you know, we do leverage front and inbound communication. Um, we always prioritize inbound communication. We always prioritize customer service over making that next sales call. Um, again, that's part of what we believe in, but we're always going to prioritize keeping our missed call rate low, keeping our response times extremely low 
over making that additional outbound outreach and outbound phone call. So it's been a lot of shifting of priorities, which can be a bit uh, can be a bit difficult at times. Um, but ultimately, uh, we have been able to maintain um, you know maintain our customer service metrics through leveraging you know the different types of communication platforms that we use use despite the <laughs> insane tsunami of uh, applications that are coming in. Cool. All right. I think I think uh, you and I are both in sales, so we could talk forever, but I'll put a pause Probably. on us right now. Um, I think there's about <laughs> six minutes left um, for the audience. If there's any, I believe we're doing live Q&A or any questions in the chat, we're more than happy to answer. So let's see. I think... You know, I could take one to, to, to kick this off. I think Scott, uh, about 20 minutes ago, asked in the chat, uh, do you guys integrate with any transaction management software? Um, so I think I would need to understand a little bit more about the expectation or the use case there. But specifically, our platform has um, the ability to integrate with any existing platform. We have about 80 plus integrations out of the box. Um, and then if there's some developer resources, we can build any type of contextual information inside of front. And so as an example, um, if someone emails with a transaction ID number that you have your own homegrown um, database regarding to refinances, we can automatically pull up that transaction um, if it's inside of front, built inside of front. So um, there are ways to do it. We just have to like understand a little more of the meat behind the bone on the ask there. Yeah, and, and on top of that, I would consider better probably a transaction management system um, in a lot of ways. And one reason that we went with Front was because of the API and the ability to integrate deeply. So we're able to pull communication from Front into our software as well um, through a pretty seamless integration. I think Matt had another question. Oh, is there? I didn't. You go to the Q and A. Oh, the Q and A. I was gonna chat. Huh. Okay. Oh, I'll ask you that question. So this is for you. <laughs> Just thinking strategically, is it better to have one single point of contact with the client, or have each subsequent subsequent person deal with them and then hand off? So it sounds like through the process, how do, like what is the most customer centric and efficient process for your business internally? to have as the customer moves throughout the process? Yeah, that's the billion dollar question. Um, it is it is a difficult one. I We have tested out many models. Um, currently, we have a, a little bit of a hybrid and we do it a little bit differently for our different types of transactions. Um, so strategically, kind of my philosophy is that um, we really wanna meet the customer where they are. So where we wanna go with our technology is it's kind of like if you have a customer that's self-service, that we'll kind of just take them through and they can be passed off. If we wanna have a more high touch service, we can. Um, the way we do that today is really primarily through refinance and purchase. Um, and so on refinance, we have a bit more of that kind of assembly line type of model um, where we do pass the customer off to different main points of contact. We spend a great deal of investment in our communication strategy and our, our technology product to make those pass offs as seamless as possible. The number one thing we want to do is make sure the customer doesn't feel like they have to re-explain themselves, um, that they feel like they're talking to the right expert at that time. We've found that with purchase transactions and with real estate agents in particular, we really don't want to give them a separate point of contact um, because you're with them in the transaction for a much longer period of time. You know. Um, with real estate agents, we could be working with people for 18 months, um, six months to 18 months. Our average transaction cycle after application is about 70 days because um, it takes just a while to find the house and do all those things. But we find for the, the longer transactions or the longer relationships, that primary point of contact works really well. If it's a refinance and you're just looking for a lower interest rate and you just want to get the thing done, it's not as important to the consumer. Hmm. That makes that makes sense. Um, without giving away too many trade secrets internally, sure. maybe some ballpark figures on like what is your average time to close? That uh, was a question from uh, Mr. Pat Ward in the chat. Yeah. Um, so on average, it's about twenty one days. Um, it's a bit faster on refinance because um, we can close those immediately. Purchase. Um, you know, we still see that most people in the purchase market set about a thirty day close timeline um, because of 
preferences for moving and things like that. Um, but we are always trying to make uh, the transaction faster. Um, and ultimately, what we're really our goal is, particularly with purchase, is to provide certainty faster. So even if the customer wants to close on a 30 day timeline because they want to figure out moving and things like that, which there's a lot of factors that go into that, as a lot of you know, um, we want to be able to remove those financing contingencies or not have any financing contingencies, remove those appraisal contingencies um, and get that uh, approval status um, and get that, you know, ultimately um, conditional approval or final approval as fast as possible. So just within a couple of days. Yeah, makes that makes sense. We have one minute left. Is there any other questions allowed? Or sorry, allowed. Uh, any other questions out there? I don't know why I said allowed. Um, one minute left. We're getting the we're getting the warning side. All right. Well, I think we're probably about to be bouncing up right against our time. Sarah, really great to hear insights from Better. Like truly exceptional. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Andrew. All right, everybody. Thank you. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye. Stay safe.